and welcome to the second video uh, still on NF5 let's jump into the gameplay we could 3-bet here it's probably not GTO but the guy is short sticking so but I don't really care uh, we can bet race all in here if you that's race flop. But he folds flop. So no spectacular flop all in there. Um, we have a lot of different options here, but I think on NF5 the best one is to just triple barrel. And play bet fold on all streets. I mean obviously not if we improve but in this case for example even if we do improve to the net straight and they start raising for example on the river it is very likely that we are running into a full house and actually have to fold but obviously it depends on the exact run out and exact sizings. Uh, we can squeeze, we can just call two. But I like playing aggressive preflop. It's a very, it's a really high rake environment, so taking down the pot pre, also going for value against their weak ranges. Like people will overcall something like eights here. I mean, eights is ahead of our hand in this position, so that's actually how we want to fold. But you know what I mean? They call pretty weak hands that good rakes are not going to be calling. Um, yeah, we flop the flush draw one more time. And yeah, we can also play this as a bluff catcher actually because if if we if we check and each starts betting jack ten of hearts, it's pretty good for us. But because I don't think they do that too much, I just play it as a bluff. It's also obviously way easier to just play bet fold, bet fold, bet fold. I mean, it's probably the easiest way to play any hand, but it's often not the highest EV. Even though on on these kind of stakes, it is usually. This is a really good spot to to bluff. Especially if you start checking the flop. Uh, if they are trapping, they're usually gonna check race flop or turn, which means once they call flop and turn on the river, they will have a very weak range. I'm gonna check back here. There's not really ma many turns that are bad for us. It's also pretty hard to get, I mean, three streets of value here with queen 10 is pretty optimistic. So let's just play this as our bluff catcher here. And this guy does not spaz off. I'm gonna check again. And this is actually pretty close against pot bats. You don't want to be bluff catching much, but we have a top pair after checking twice, so I'm gonna bluff catch. And that's a really weird way to play as king. And it's exactly the, the reason why we slow player of queen 10 like this. Because of spaz, it's like that. Um, probably... The guy does seem like he's a wreck. So I'm gonna call the flop. Looking to outplay him on a turn on river if possible. Yeah, I'm just gonna race here. Should be looking scary enough. If he has something like King Jack, 
he's gonna use the fold there, right? Even something like queens he should be folding, but sometimes they do level themselves into a call. I expect him to check the turn a lot. In the specific spots. He bets small, so I guess he actually has a better queen here very often. It's pretty hard for him to have a natural bluff. Like, what natural bluffs could he have? I mean, stuff that makes sense is like 6 8 of clubs here, but is he really doing that stuff? Probably not. My, my guess really is he has like king queen, ace queen here. Just going for value. Yeah, and now it's confirmed. So like, here he's never ever bluffing like that. His line is just value only. And against the value only, we obviously do this with Queen Jack, so we fold. Yeah, we flop the nut flush here in Big Blind versus CTG, which is exactly what you want. On this type of flop, they check back often. Now we get lucky. Uh, I'm gonna be raising. Because we have the nut flush, we could also be calling, but I think the guy is more passive. So we want to go for value as soon as possible. Yeah, not betting here. <clears throat> we do have a cut shot and an overcard, but they are both useless. Because if we hit them, we cannot bet for value anymore. So it's not really a valuable draw. Draws are only good if, if if you hit them, you can value bet them. Mm. This is the sizing. We hope the board doesn't pair. That's a really bad river, now it's really tough to get a call. Uh, but we go in it anyway. Then you sometimes show up with something like King Queen of Suit and the King of, Cl uh, King of Diamonds. And I'm not sure if he's capable of folding that. So we just go for max value. And he folds instantly. possible to continue here because he doesn't bet really big, but I want to have the backdoor flush right here before I consider it. Looks like a hand we should be slow playing, but I'm actually not gonna slow play this hand. What I'm slow playing here is ace 10 of clubs, pocket aces, pocket 10s, pocket 6s. But this hand I just bet. Pretty nitty to fold here actually. I'm gonna do it anyway. We are looking for a turn that does not a 5. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's one of the worst possible turns. So I'm just gonna be check folding here. I'm, I'm basically looking for turns where I can either triple barrel and put something like 8s into a, into a, like into folding on the river or something. Uh, 
or I turn a bunch of equity and can work with that. But yeah, this on this type of board, it doesn't happen often anyway. What did he have? It's three. Right, sevens is actually in the zone of like Let's say I bet small here and he folds jack 10. That's really good for me because he may, he's making an equity mistake. But at the same time, I think 7 is good enough to check back and hope he bluffs to turn random. Yeah, like 7 is like in between. With 6s, I think it's a clear bet. And with 8s, it's a clear check. It's like, <laughs> let's check it one time. I guess 7 is like 50 50. Now we should bet though, we should be getting value from A-side there. Fold river, like mitts. They do bluff quite a lot. If you check back the flop and they bet the turn, it's very often a bluff. But once they bet the river again, it's usually not a bluff anymore. And there's a lot of players that play like that. We need a diamond, a jack, a queen, a king, a ten. But we get raised, so simple fold there. Probably win against something like pocket fives or lose to like, I don't know, a random nine or whatever. Oh, he's king. So that guy, for example, did not pot the river with ace king, whereas in the beginning of this video we had a guy potting the river in that spot. And that is what I meant in the last video when I was talking about people are very random. Like the one guy will be playing the hand this way and the next guy plays it completely different. It's pretty interesting. Especially in Zoom, because yeah, like I'm probably never ever playing against this guy ever again. Or if I ever do, then yeah, it's gonna be a totally different spot. And it's also possible that he has changed his strategy already 10 million times, so maybe the next time in the spot he pots it again, right? <laughs> or like, who knows? It's so impossible to predict. That doesn't mean though that you don't have any idea of what they're doing. Obviously, you still can. Have tendencies of people what they are, are doing on average and yeah anyway that's it for my second video leave a like if you liked it or thumbs down if you hated it leave a comment if you have a comment on the hand um, subscribe if you like this and want to see more good luck at the tables see you the next time